Jose. Here. Chuck Nielsen. Here. Mike Holstead. Minutes of the public hearing um, on the 2014 levy. Ready to take a look at that? Any questions? No, I don't have any. I don't have any. Okay. Uh, special meeting from the, uh, December 11th. kids. Um, it was a little bit lower than normal. Normally we average about 125, but um, we still we still are up there in numbers, which is good. Uh, Santa visited the Park District on Saturday, December 13th. It was the busiest it has ever been. Like, we had a line out the door, which is awesome. I mean, I know people complain about, like, the mall prices being so expensive. So they can either take their own picture here or we provide them with a picture for $3. So um, we had a line out the door. It was pretty awesome. We were pretty busy for the whole two hours, which was really good. Um, we had our first ever holiday house judging contest, um, thanks to Angela and Debbie and Evelyn, who helped judge. Um, you see the addresses listed below. They're also on our website, and I believe she posted them on Facebook as well. Um, we took a trolley trip downtown. That was a full bus. The trip was sold out. We had a waiting list. Tiny Top Pageant. Polar Bear Express was also pretty successful this year. We sold out um, probably less than an hour. Um, brochure was delivered the week of December 15th. Uh, All Stars and Open Basketball are still doing really well. Upcoming events, uh, the Bitty Basketball Program with Bremen starts Saturday. We have a tea dance the 16th, um, and we have a new Lunch Bunch program. We're taking a trip to Blue Chip Casino, and then uh, just a list of other one day events that we got going on. The um, the big basketball, did they get numbers? They're low. They are very low, um, but they, uh, Evelyn talked to Dave about this the other day and they decided that they are gonna run it um, the first week to see what people wanna do, because we figure that the only way to get it going is to let it go. Let it start. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it, we're, I don't believe the coaches are getting paid. I think they're volunteering, so, Really, there's there's really nothing to lose. Uh, the Otis Lane, who is the head bas boys basketball coach at Bremen, was going to visit all the feeder schools. Now that's what I heard on uh, Tuesday. Tuesday and they were closed Wednesday and Thursday, so I don't I don't know if that happened or if it's potentially going to happen tomorrow. Uh, their their inclination, and we totally agreed with it, was to go ahead and. See what we can get. Bring the people in and see what we can Right. I think that total. I want to say there's around 12 in both age, like total with both age groups. So we were a little disappointed. We thought. I mean, it was it was pretty cheap. I mean, it was like I think it was 40 dollars for the whole time, and 
Uh, we thought we really thought it was going to take off, but but the holidays, you know, maybe it was just a bad time of year. I, I, you know, we'll we'll evaluate it and see where it goes. Um, you have the Ray Lodge report. Um, not a whole lot going on over there. We did get the electrical problem with the emergency lights corrected, and we have been re-inspected by the fire department, and we are up to code on that. And there was no senior lunch this month as scheduled. It would have been tomorrow, which is probably a good thing. Yeah. Good, good thing. Um, this is the time of year when we schedule our annual board uh, retreat. Typically, we've done it on a Saturday in February, so if you could check the calendars for either the 7th or the 14th. <coughs> uh, we probably meet right here in this room, and typically it will be done by noon. Okay. Jerry? Uh, board report for December 2014. A total of 110 work labor orders have been completed on facility due during the month of December, with three staying work in progress. All required monthly inspections have been completed, which include daily park, playground, and weekly vehicle and equipment checks. All party setups and clamps for the month were also completed. The fuel report is uh, 111 gallons of unleaded fuel at a cost of $3.07. Total fuel spending for the month was $341.99. Uh, the following additional work has also been completed during the month. We finished uh, all the slit seating at Memorial, Hobbies, and Costner. Uh, we winterized our lawnmowers, stored all our summer equipment at Memorial Garage and Tracy. Uh, we replaced the Rosner's large red picnic table bench top that was damaged in the summer. And uh, the rec center electrical problem, we got that figured out over the month. It's all replaced. Uh, we got the brakes repaired and replaced on our 2002 DC 50 Ecoline. The rear rotors and brake pads needed to be swapped. And we did some yard work at the garage. We burned 25 yards of branches and shrubs and burned containers. Uh, some of the following work will be completed of January. A lot of snow removal, <laughs> picnic table repair, prep painting for the summer, and uh, start seasonal maintenance repair work at home by baseball field. That is all. Um, as far as the electrical repair at the rec center, as I reported to you last month, we were having a problem on the north end of the building. We had several outlets and lighting areas that were out. We were having a difficult time getting an electrician to come out. We finally got one. We determined that the, um, there was water in the conduit, which is buried in the floor, and uh, he had to run all in conduit from the mechanical room at the south end of the building to the north end. He put in, he ended up at the end of the day, he came in uh, Christmas week because he had to shut down a large portion of the building in order to work. And by that time we were done with Tiny Tots and during the day there's not that great amount of activity in here. So um, he was able to run all new conduit. Um, he put a new panel in the mechanical room which only serves the north end of the building. Um, we, uh, the total expense was $6,228.77, and I'm asking you to approve the payment of that bill this evening. Um, Hold on up. $6,228.77. Um, there are, I, I thought there were still breakers out in the Lutron panel, but it appears that now the lights are on, so Jerry, yeah. is, I asked him to look at it. So the outs we were having problems with the outside lights on the building and the parking lot weren't coming on correctly, but that has all been uh, corrected. I also spoke to the electrician. We had a recommendation from Paderma to uh, put surge protectors on the building, and he looked at it and talked to his son, who is an electrical engineer that engineers projects in large buildings, and his recommendation is the cost to do that is prohibitive and probably not worth it to the size of our operation. He suggested that we have uh, good surge protectors on each of the computers, which we've already had. Um, at the time that we, our last uh, plane with Pedermal was a surge had blown out our um, alarm panel. We've since gone to wireless, so that should, be, should not be an issue. And both of our HVAC units have face protectors on them. So, 
yeah. our phone uh, system also has a sort of protector on it and our copy machine. So there's really, you know, I, I can pursue it. I asked him to give me a ballpark figure of what he thought it would cost. If the expense would be in the labor. He'd have to run a neutral line to each and every outlet in the building. Wasn't really sure he could fit one in some of the old pipes. So. Um, <clears throat> I also gave you uh, tonight a copy of the memo that Ned, our attorney, sent over. Um, it's uh, his legal response to one of the uh, items that was brought up in the uh, petition that was filed here in November. Um, I'm not going to read it all to you, but just some of the highlights that he brought up. Um, there are pieces in the Open Meetings Act that um, allow us to keep um, discussions about compensation, appointment, dismissal, and performance of employees. Those are not subject to FOIA by the Open Meetings Act, one of the few things that is not subject to FOIA. There is also the Personnel Record Review Act, which prohibits public bodies from releasing employee disciplinary records to third parties. Uh, there's also the Right to Privacy in the Workplace Act, which protects uh, privacy of public employees. Basically, the summary is that every employee of a public body is entitled to the same privacy rights that private sector employees are allowed. Uh, he further quotes sections in our policy manual, which states that employee records are confidential and that employee performance reviews are done. Um, it's possible that some of this stuff could be protected by employee contracts. I don't believe there is anything in my contract that prevents that, but these other things do. So, uh, if there are any questions, I can get back in touch with Matt or he will be here next week if you have any things you want to discuss further with him about this topic. Um, I also provided you with a copy of the uh, Pregnancy Rights in the Workplace. This is a, um, we received this both from uh, Paderma and IAPD. Uh, basically, they have expanded the rights of uh, pregnant women and women who have just recently given birth and need in private areas to nurse or express milk or whatever. The, they're all uh, highlighted here. And uh, a copy of this has been posted on our wall where we have all our hiring practices and stuff. This is required by statute. Um, also, in the um, human resources, uh, John Klimczak, who was working part-time for us, uh, resigned. He got a superintendent's job in Florida and moved there Monday, which was, or last Monday, which was a great move on his part. <laughs> yeah. He and uh, Sean Howe had been sharing the position that West Minus uh, vacated in the summer. So at this point, we have uh, talked to Sean about coming on full time, and uh, he has uh, agreed to that. So one concern that I had that I shared with Jerry is that Sean was providing weekend coverage, and we didn't have scheduled weekend coverage with our maintenance department, and Sean has agreed to continue doing that. So he will work Wednesday through Sunday and be off Monday Tuesday. And outside of that, the only thing I have is the uh, <coughs> Approval of the payment to JR renovations. That payment is forty nine twenty. It does not include parts which were we we purchased to save tax and expense. Then that brings it up to the sixty two twenty. That's correct. Okay. We need a formal vote on that. I'll make a motion to bring that bill. I'll second. Mr. Nielsen. Aye. Mr. O'Shea. Aye. Mr. Colston. Aye. As far as the, uh, the uh, surge protector should just be fine as far as I'm concerned. Okay. If it's a light cover, a light thunder, so that's fine. Right. I mean, if a bolt of lightning hits the building. I mean, exactly. What, what happens is we have, we lose phases because of the, um, the pole that's like in the middle of the parking lot. It, the lat, we lost power like a couple of months ago and you know, what happens is a squirrel he jumps from one line to another and he gets fried and he blows the breaker and kind of comes out and fixes that. Yeah. 
the south of us, we have another one, so, the, you know, but the, not all the building goes out because one ends that way and one's this way. So unless it's a really big uh, area or we get directly struck by lightning, the odds of that are very small. Well, it's a safe piece of art. Right. Yeah, the Derma was willing to pay $200 to bring out some company from down the road, but I mean, that wouldn't barely have paid their mileage to get here. Yeah. Okay. 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 Uh, I have nothing else on that. Chris has reported it's available yet since it's such an early date in the month. Right. Pretty light because right. of how early it was in the month. Did we get a certificate for Perdermo? We did. We haven't received our, we got a, a, the A rating and a $1,500 um, prize, if you will. I'm not sure if we did. I think we received it. I believe we did, yeah. yeah. Cool. Thank you.